Greetings, friends. Welcome back for another look at unlike denominators. They can be tricky. By now, you've probably realized with a problem like one third plus one fourth, you know, we have a little bit of an issue here. Not the same family. And searching for that family can start to become time consuming and cutting up pieces and also you might have realized you have to go outside of the box that we have to even find those pieces. Mmm, and you really want to get that fraction work done. So let's think about this differently and without these pieces, instead take a look at this piece of paper. Let's pretend it's a unit, a whole of something, right? You know, with this whole we could fold it like this and divide it into thirds that would be pretty cool, right? We could also fold it into a uh, fourth quite easily, but why don't we do both of those things and see what happens? How many sections now exist in our paper that were divided by the folds? Do you see 12 too? Well, that would be the common denominator of thirds and fourths, and you might have already known that, but here you can easily see that number that they both have in common. So, maybe you're still having some issues understanding this, or you want to see another graphic approach to finding those common denominators. Well, get yourself some graph paper, a ruler, some colored pencils, and some fraction problems. And I even have a couple to show you today. This lesson will look at addition. Subtraction will be in another lesson. So go ahead and get your paper ready. Let's have our first example be one third plus one fourth. Go ahead and write that down. There it is, and look at those denominators, thirds and fourths. We're going to create a rectangle that is defined by those denominators. So what I mean is the top of that rectangle will be three across, and the side of that rectangle will be four down. Once you have the rectangle defined, Go ahead and trace the lines that are inside of it to create a gridded rectangle. Take a look, and how many boxes do you see? 12. Let's go ahead and write that down. That's going to be our common denominator. But now the fun begins. Get those colored pencils out. Choose a color for the thirds and choose a color for the fourths. I'm going to use yellow for my thirds and I'm going to shade in around the thirds that I wrote down. I'm going to use blue for my fourths, and I'm going to shade in around the fourths. Now, notice that our rectangle is split into thirds and fourths. There are three columns here, four rows. That's broken our rectangle into thirds vertically and fourths horizontally. So, let's color in one-third in the color you chose for a third. One of those columns, one of those three columns, is a third of our rectangle. What do you think we're going to do with the fourth? We are going to find one of those rows to shade in. One of those four rows. How about the top one? And notice how if you choose two different colors, when they mix, you might end up with a third color. Let's take a look at what's going on here. 
you can see that one of the four rows is colored in. You can also see that one of the three columns is also colored in. And notice that green one right there. It's pretty cool. We're going to count that twice because they overlap. Now remember, there's 12 of these total. And if that green one counts twice, how many squares are colored in? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven twelfths. We've just completed an addition problem visually. One third plus one fourth equals seven twelfths. Pretty cool, right? Let's try another one. How about something a little bit more absurd, like two fifths plus three fourths? We are going to do the same thing. We're going to look at those denominators, fifths and fourths, and create a gridded rectangle defined by those values. Five across, four down. Take a look. We've created a rectangle that is made up of four rows, five columns. Well, let's go ahead and choose some colors to shade these in with. Hmm. Yellow and red sound pretty good this time. We can already get part of our answer, the denominator, by counting up the total number of squares we see. 20. 20. Now we need to shade in the number of parts that our problem tells us about. So the first one is 2 fifths. We look at how the rectangle is divided into fifths, and we're going to color in two of those fifths. Beautiful. Now we need to color in three of these fourths. Haha, <laughs> almost missed part of that one there. Okay, okay, remember, the ones that are both colors count twice. And if you've been using two colors like this, you may have seen a third color there. Let's go ahead and count up all of the squares that are colored in. I know, a lot, right? 23! There's quite a few red ones, a couple yellow ones, but also several orange ones too. But now look at our fraction we ended up with. That's improper. So heavy on the top, 23rd 20th, my goodness. How many holes do you think we could make of 20 out of that? That's right, one, and what would be left over? Three. We can definitely change our answer to a mixed number. One and three twentieths. I want to show you one more case that you might come across. What happens if we start with an improper fraction? Let's do 7 sixths plus 2 ninths. Choose two colors and let's get busy with this one. This rectangle is going to be defined by the denominators, 6 across, 9 down. But before you color, we need to have a little bit of a chat. But let's make that rectangle.
Wow, quite a large rectangle. And did you count up the number of squares that it takes up? 54. So there's our denominator for our answer. So now we have to have a chat about something because, you know, we started off with that improper fraction 7 sixths. And that's pretty big. And now look at our unit. It only has six columns. What do you think we're going to do? Because we do have to show 7 sixths. Yes, which one of you said color outside the lines? That's exactly what we have to do. We have to fill in, well, a sixth that's not part of our unit. That's not part of our whole. So, well, it's going to take a little bit, but let's get to it. All right, so see how we depicted that we have seven sixths. We have more than a whole to start off with, and we're adding more? A little bit greedy, don't you think? Well, we also have to talk about these two ninths, because remember, it's going to be two of the ninths that this rectangle split into, and it doesn't count into what is over that whole. So, grab your other color and only color in two of the nine rows. All right, take a look. Now, notice that those rows don't go into that extra bit, and there's a reason for that. Remember, all of these count twice. That would change our answer a bit if we counted those other two twice. But, well, let's count up what we have. I know, it's a lot. 75? Wow, we ended up pretty well. 75 50 fourths. But hey, you say, that's a really improper fraction and uh, maybe we can reduce it too. So first, let's pull a whole of 54 out of those 75 50 fourths. That's right. One and 21 50 fourths. But hey, you say, 21 50 fourths, don't those have something they can both be reduced by? Totally. We can reduce each one by three, and we'll end up with one and seven eighteenths, which is equivalent to one and 21 50 fourths. Well, Try these out. This is something you can take with you even outside if you wanted to. And there's a method for subtraction too. And if you're ready to go check that out, go ahead. But do have fun with this. Get some great colors on your paper and see math in a whole new way. Later, friends.